Hello everyone, today we're going to clone this spotlight a theme from atelwinui.com. As you see, this is the existing UI which is up from the Tailwind and it's not free. You need to use a bunch of dollars to get that. So today is my plan to clone it and to show you how actually we can do it. So once you're gonna finish, it will be running like that in our local machine. As you see, it will be the similar of that. And after that, we're gonna deploy it in the Vercel. So you're gonna have it your own build to showcase your work. So first of all, let's see actually what we're gonna have this entire build. As we are cloning it, we are trying to make it entirely the similar of the existing one. So I'm not doing it as my personal project. So I'm not gonna modify that. I'm gonna just do it as the way it's supposed to be then you can interact with it you can change the topic you can change the subject and text and you can change the design then do it as your own first thing first we have a header which one we in the left side if we have the logo and in the middle we have the tab to indexing all the other things and man and to navigate all other pages then we have our login button and we have our theme toggle now it supports both the dark and light theme. If I make it dark, it will support for the dark. If I make it light, it will combine with the light theme. So now after the header, we have our banner section here, or you can call it a hero section. After the hero section, we have a little bit of uh, choreography here for images. And then we have our article section. In the left, we have article and in the right, we have just to get the email and also showcasing the work of us now if we click any of the article it will just go back to that article in that articles tag and you see it's getting a slack of that article and to combine that entire things we're gonna use that mdx because tell we use, use that mdx one so we're gonna use that also to showcase how it can actually be done and you see this for the similar for uh, all other article pages now from here you can go back with that you can go back with also those tabs but better you know we have a little bit icon to go back also so that's the go back here now then we have a footer here where we are targeting this four things and just putting some rice choreography and so now actually we can go in the about section in the about section you can articulate it more because i clone it so i keep it as the same then you can also just uh, uh, link through your all the instagram things and others then we have our article page where we are keeping all the articles available for me it's just three available if you click the similar way with this lag it will take you to the article page then we have also our project section as you see it will take you to the you can showcase your work your projects and how it can be done you can do it as the things pretty much in a good way then we have a speaking section similar things and also we have the uses section as you see so those kind of work actually give you the idea how you can rearrange reshape yourself to learn something better so my advice for you what i actually i want to give you that just try to do it with me then do it by yourself so so that in that way you can learn something more you can use your own design what i'm saying just learn from here how you can do it then apply it in a broader way and this entire build also is highly responsive if we just go back to the home as you see for the small devices we're going to have a menu option and from the menu you can also toggle through that and it's responsive for all the devices if we just make it smaller to bigger as you see it's fully responsive okay so actually what you're gonna use the technology you're gonna use to build that first thing first we're gonna use the nextjs and it will be the nextjs of 14 14.1 and then we're gonna have that a uh, markdown text to create that pretty much all the good demo texts because you're gonna use the um like the normal text so we're going to use that to combine it in a very good way and then we're going to use that headless ui to making this beautiful design where we are actually creating the menu and other things then of course the telvin css so now those kind of things actually can be helpful to create some creative design if you're looking for a job or you are just learning the code at the beginning this kind of project can help you to understand all the tech uh, in, in, in a very better way and can make you a very good shape to make it done so now what is our first priority is that to combine and uh, maximize that one because you need to have a very much a good 
time to set up that entire application and for me i don't want you to spend that much time because for i will just keep that one open for my references and then i'm gonna cl close all other tabs here so for me what i'm gonna do as you see the tailwind yt i just create a repo where actually we're gonna just keep all the startup things like we're gonna use that headless ui react we're gonna use that map box we're gonna use the mdx next mdx and the tailwind css typography clx next next theme so those are the lot of packages you're gonna use so i already keep everything here so you can start it from the beginning and I, I all the setup i did for you so what you just need to do in the link uh, in the description you're going to find a link for this repo you just need to get that repo and just clone it you can download it as is your preferences and after that what you need to do i will just open my terminal here then just simply i'm going to just write that command is that git clone and i'm going to paste my link so it's gonna clone that repository in my local machine so that's pretty much all so you need to install the git in your local machine and also one more thing you need to install the node.js if you don't know how to do it we will roll back to that to my channel there is a lot of video on that how you can make two things done and then i'm gonna just put ls as you see we have the tailwind yt i'm gonna just go back with the tailwind yt and i'm inside on that project so i'll just simply run that code dot to open that in my code editor okay it's already opened so from here i'm gonna just open the terminal so that's the terminal and in the terminal i will try to prefer that git bash so before going through the projects i want you to execute the first command to run that application which will be npm run dev so it will initialize the project to run in the local but as you see it's not doing because it's not finding the internal or external command for the next because when you are pushing anything in the github repository we are ignoring one thing which is called that node modules and also one more things i want you to do is that remove that uh like the git repo link from here that you can open the file and you can find that dot git remove that one because it's already linked with my repo so if you are doing anything whenever you are trying to push in the github it will make it will not take the action because it's already origin with my project but if you want to share or if you want to make some uh something to uh, combined with my project you can feel free to do it but if you don't just remove that so now once we are doing that we are not pushing that node modules because a very chunk of a file which actually is not good to put also in the github so we are ignoring that so whenever you are cloning anything from a github if you are not ignore if you are ignoring that one you need to command one more things is that npm install to install all the dependencies and what are the dependencies if you just see back in my package.json you see just a similar we have headless ui react we have that uh, mdx we have next mdx tailwind css typography clx those are the things which we are doing so now just explore a bit on the project we have our public folder where we have nothing at all that we have our source folder now in the source folder we have four different folder which one is the app which is actually the prime folder and within the app we have our layout our pages and i think one is the text which actually we are practicing for the mdx so i'm going to show you actually why we did that then we have our components actually pretty much nothing just some a demo description data which actually we are not going to use it just you to start with then we have all the images we are going to use those are the images we're going to use with our project then we have our style which we have the global css and the prism for using that uh, de design purposes and then we have one mdx components which actually making things very much good for uh, the next configuration then we have our typography.ts which actually we are using to combine with the theme for our project as you see this is a bunch of file which i prefer you to go with line by line then you can understand a very better combination on it and then we have the tailwind config.ts 
here we are combining the typography and all the other font sizes and other things that's pretty much all so that's the setup for to run our application and again if you are not understanding those things trust me feel free to explore it if you don't understand any if you are not understanding try to search in google try to ask question in chat gpt you can find a better idea and if you fail to get anything which is not answering properly then knock me i'm, I'm ready to answer your questions so now to execute the program you just need to make that npm run dev it will run that in our local machine so what i'm gonna do i will just close that and I'm gonna open here my local host 3000. Okay, it's uh, pretty much ready. So let's go back to my page. Okay, so in that command components, I'm gonna remove that uh, this file which is not required. You also feel free to delete that one. Okay, so this is our fresh project as you see tell in yt test project if you did everything perfectly with me in a good combinational way then you will just come here you will roll back here so now we're gonna start it from here so first thing first how actually you're gonna start it so here in the layout we're gonna start working on that so our first changes is to change the title so we're gonna make that as tailwind yt block content and you see it just changed our title okay so the next things so now we have our body here and in the body we're gonna roll back so many other things so first thing first let's uh, create something we're gonna create a header first but before going to create the header I'm just uh, going to do something which actually is that creating the providers for our themes so it's pretty much a simple things I will just go in my components I will take one file which will be my provider provider.tsx or I will put it as a smaller letter provider.tsx okay so here it will be my uh, provider file so actually i can just pass it in my root directory not in that component layer so now here in the provider it depends on you you can keep it as provider or you can keep also the providers if you have the multiple providers if you are putting so now here we're going to run a simple functions which are going to be the provider so i'm going to just const uh, uh oops it will be export so export const uh, I'm gonna just make that as a function which is that providers now here I will just put that arrow function on here so it will return something and what I'm gonna return I'm gonna show you so I'll just put a div here right now <coughs> now here there will be a lot of things to go first I'm gonna create an app context to go with that but before that as we are using the theme changer i will make it as use client okay so now first thing first we're gonna create that app contest and that will be export const oops it will be const app context it will be uh, i think it will be a create context okay and don't forget to uh, just import it from the react and from that create context I need to execute that uh, previous I think it's a previous path name okay if the path name is available it will be a string okay and also I need to make it as an wrap it as an object parameter uh, I think uh, maybe I did something wrong here mm, what can be the exception the exception, uh, uh, exception will be i keep that one here it should be inside of it okay that's my app context so what i'm gonna do instead of the deep i'm gonna pass that uh app context here okay uh and then okay again the miss typo okay so that will be app context dot provider 
dot PR provider it's a default variable is taking that and the value it going to be our I think the previous path name okay so that's the value we're gonna define here now we need to actually pass the <coughs> theme provider here and to execute the theme provider we need to create the theme provider first and to create that one mm, let's create that the theme provider we're gonna actually uh just import it from the next themes which actually we already installed that one so it will be import i oops it will be uh import and then it will be theme provider and also one more thing it will be use theme so these two things is coming from the next themes okay now we're gonna wrap that things here so in that app context we're gonna pass that a team provider uh, team provider and also it going to be two multiple there so now we will just uh, make the things which will be it will be the attribute which going to be take as a class because we're gonna toggle through with that class name which is gonna be dark and the normal other things so we also are gonna make the disable transition on change <coughs> and then we're gonna pass that children okay that will be the children we're gonna pass so as we pass the children of course we need to pass the typo here so it will be children and the definition of the children it will be uh children and that going to be as from the react dot react note okay so now we need to set a watcher which is going to be watch when you are toggling through because once you're gonna clicking our little icon there so it's gonna watch through it which actually going to use the theme so let's go over here in the top we're gonna create another function which will be const and it will be theme watcher let's just de declare the function here and we just going to let a constant here it's going to be uh resolved theme and also going to be set theme and now we're gonna use theme over there so by default it will be an empty empty things now we're gonna run the use effect here so in the use effect we're gonna set things up so first we're gonna create two dependency here which is going to be resolve theme and also going to be set theme this will be the two dependency here and in the use effect i'm gonna make that uh let media so in the media you're gonna make that window dot match media and that match media going to be because by default we're gonna get that we're gonna prefer the color so here it's going to be uh i believe it will be okay let me get the double quotation mark here because sometimes it can actually giving a pain when it's not working so it will be a prefers and then going to be a color and a scheme which going to be dark okay so that's our media so now const on media change we're going to declare another function so when the media is changed it's going to be lit uh, system so we're going to set the uh, system theme from here first priority so it will be a media dot uh let's put the matches if it's matches then going to be dark if it's not matches going to be light okay if now we're going to resolve the theme from here if the resolve themes is equal to system theme uh, oops not the style sheet uh system theme then we're gonna just return something we're gonna just make the set theme of as the system theme so this is a simple articulate idea of that if the system thing is dark it will work as dark if it's light it will get the light first it will parity the parity gonna give for the system theme then it gonna just go through the other parities okay so we have the all the function so now we will declare because we need to get call the function otherwise it will not work so it's media change so once the media is changing media dot we're gonna make an event listener so whenever it's change we're gonna get something which going to be on media change that's it 
and then we're going to return from our function that return it will take uh we'll just declare it as a, a function also okay so now it will be media dot remove even listener because once that check is done also we can call all the on media change okay all media change so that's pretty much all to create the theme watcher so now apart from it in the top layer of the children we're gonna pass that theme watcher to watch the theme so it will be theme watcher okay there is a slight error let's see what's actually is giving us and i think i misspelled two of these things which is going to be take my as the path name which i forgot so it will be use path name and then i need to declare the previous path because we get the app context but we didn't define that previous path here so it will be a previous path name and then we're gonna make that use uh, I believe it will be use a previous so use previous and then we're gonna declare that uh, path name so in that way we can define so we have that use previous so we need to define actually that previous in the top layer so in the upper layer which I'm gonna pass that a function so it will be cause use uh, previous and here um, or instead of the cons you can also learn how you can create the function in a different variable also so it will be use a previous and of course we're gonna put a t mark here and then we're gonna just pass the value as t and then we're gonna declare a function here so it will be a reference with ref equal to be use ref don't forget to import it also and here we're gonna pass that uh, oops you're gonna pass the t value here uh, okay it will be a simple functional object and here we're gonna make that use effect here use effect okay so again returning the value parameter the dependency here it will be just the value so in the use effect we're gonna define that ref dot current it will be equal to value so and after that so after defining that one we need to return the value so uh i believe yeah so that's the value we're getting from the use effect so we're gonna just return ref dot current so i think uh that's pretty much it so let's go back here so there is another error which we're getting from the theme watcher if we just combine here okay there's a type of error and it could be because we make that we didn't return anything so i'll just for safe purposes i'll return null so in that way my all the providers are done so if you think uh, if you can see that that's the provider i declare from here so over here in the children layer see this setting up is taking a bit of time so just i'm setting the theme remember i set the entire project here with the mdx uh, configuration so it's taking a time that's why i did it beforehand so now i will just cut that and here i'm gonna pass my providers so again it i need to import it from the providers then i will pass my children here and let's see if it's working okay so my theme is the dark theme system theme is dark so it's taking the dark theme so means it's working just fine okay so again i'm gonna take a div here so let's get the div inside that div i'm gonna just pass my children okay so in that div i'm gonna put some class name here so in the class name it's gonna be flex with going to be full and background i'm gonna make that as block and overflow i'm gonna make hidden that's it you see that's the project right now so now this from this we need to turn it into this so this is the entire outside background which we created right now i'm gonna close this also so now i'm gonna define a layout here so in the components layer i'm gonna pass a layout layout.tsx rafce 
to create that functional parameter of the component you can just in just install some of the extension which is one is a very good one is that es7 react redux so this extension which gonna give you that rs uh, rfc command line to execute and also i want i prefer you to use that for the tailwind css to get that tailwind css intelligence which can help you to combine with that prediction so in the layout we're gonna create several things so first this the layout first i'm gonna inject that layout over here so i'm gonna wrap my children here okay so that's my children i'm gonna copy that and then i'm gonna pass it inside my layout okay so now i will be able to find the layout here okay so my layout is working fine so here of course the type is code is giving an error so what i need to do because uh, oops, it will be i need to pass something from the layout i'm gonna pass that children children so i need to define what actually the children look like so it will be children remember we already did that one and that children it will be from uh, react dot react note okay you see error is just gone up so now what i'm gonna do i'm gonna just cut that and then i will take them on empty braces and then here i'm gonna paste those things so all the children it's gonna take as that parameters so now i'm gonna do a few more things first thing first i need to create a header so that will be my header so it will be header.tsx rafce to create that functional header and also i'm gonna pass that header before the children okay header okay so as you see the tiny bit of header is available so before going to work with the header in the top layer i want to work a bit so i'll give some class name which going to be design of that fixed and in sites i'm gonna make it a zero and i'm gonna make flex justify going to be center and md screen it smaller screen it will be px8 okay as you see it just getting better so now i will also get another div here actually i'm gonna get two more div here so i think one it will be uh, another it going to be better as a self-closing div okay fine So in the first tip, make it flex. We're going to be full and max width is gonna be seven axle. And for the last one, like in the middle one, it's gonna be width full and BJ going to be white. And I'm gonna give a ring of one, ring of one, okay. And ring going to be uh, of course i think ring going to be zinc of 100 so once we are toggling to dark mode it's going to be a vz zinc of 900 and then just make a bit of bigger here and then whenever i'm gonna make it dark make the ring uh, zinc of 500 i think so that will do the trick or five it, oh sorry not the 50 it's going to be 300 if we save here as you see that's the codex parameter but it's looking it's actually not working <laughs> so don't worry we're gonna fix that just in a bit so remember we are having a dip here so that's one dip that's two dip so remember that's the children dip we're gonna wrap that so we're gonna just keep it here so now okay what i'm gonna do put a class name i'm gonna make it as a relative i'm gonna make it a flex with it will be a full and it's gonna be flex on column and max width it's gonna take the seven axle and amex auto to keep it in the middle okay uh nothing change let's just go to combine a bit with that 
it just look messy because i believe we did something wrong here yeah i need to put that uh okay just give me a second i think it should be okay that's the deep so i need to keep that one one more upper layer okay now it looks good so that looks fine okay so everything is good to go let's go back to our header we're gonna work back to our header so in the header what we have actually we have uh three more things so three particular div should be arranged in our particular header so first thing first instead of div i'm gonna take it as a header tag which is going to be a very good for our seo management so now here I'm gonna take our first image so in the image and don't forget to import it up from the next images so just hit the control space for then import it in the top layer so now here you see the profile picture which we need to actually define it here so first we need to get the profile picture so to get that uh, remember we are having all the images here so let's go back to our images and also okay just keep it there in the logos we have our profile.jpg so that's the image i'm gonna use that so it will be const profile uh just profile of from it will it going to be uh not the const oops it's my bad it will be import profile from at you know it's the images folder which we need to redirect img and then it's going to be our profile picture so in the images we're gonna put a source folder which is going to be our profile and then we're gonna put an alt tag where actually you're gonna give it a name as a profile logo or you can keep anything in a way so in the class name i'm gonna give you width of 12 and height of 12 and around it going to be full and object going to be cover okay let's see if we are having that okay uh let's just you see we are getting that one so we're gonna turn it into that don't worry just stay with me we're, we're just going to be close on that okay so that's the our logo it's supposed to be not look like that just let's go back to the layout i think i misspelled some of the class name yeah it's indent it should be inset oops my bad it should be inset of zero yeah now you can see we are having those things wrapping up so it's supposed to be that which i may misspelled that's why it's not actually looking the way it should be a combined that so now it looks better and also we can just make that instead of uh, 300 we can just make it as 20 okay looks perfect yeah good to go so let's uh, just head back to header so now in the header on the top layer i'm gonna make some uh, classes but before that i'm gonna wrap that image with a link tag so that we can actually combine through that in our any of the mark pages so in the link i'm gonna just paste all of that and the href is going to be our home route so whenever we click the image it's gonna just take us to our home route okay reading call i think something we messed up uh okay uh not from the next link you see where actually we are making things wrong so the link is going to be imported from next actually so i think it's, it's from the next link so why is giving the error yeah it should be from the next link yeah it's just fine sometimes it's just giving some unexpected error because sometimes you know the compiling can be go wrong so that's the things you just need to keep things up so in the top layer of the header put some class name which is going to be uh, from the top i'm gonna give uh, the zero so it will be at the top so minus mb i'm gonna put as three and the padding y going to be a five weight will be full and mx auto to keep in the middle and padding in x axis going to be four means the horizontal padding and md whenever it's going to be md screen the horizontal padding it could, should be 10 and the flex the gap going to be 10 just to be make it ensure and justify between item center that's it okay 
that looks good so now this is the one thing and the next div which going to be combine our you know the uh navigation things so it will be that one and just keep the another one which going to be another div and here i'm gonna just wrap through a button which is going to be give us as login and then also you're gonna pass that team toggle so just pass that team toggle here okay so these two things we're gonna combine right now so first let us get the button so in the button i'm gonna just put some class name by default it will be hidden md it will be inline uh flex and also the text going to be till of 500 then a padding axis it going to be i think eight padding y axis going to be two rounded going to be a full and the dark the bj going to be black and the text going to be sm uppercase and also you're gonna give a border okay border and the border going to be till of 800 okay and also hover the text going to be till of uh i think 800 is still be good okay and dark whenever we're gonna hover from the dark the text going to be till of 200 then just normal holder uh, hover the border going to be till of 700 and to make a smooth combination we're gonna just make it duration of 300 let's see okay we have a good button here so now we need to get the team toggle but it's not looks uh, combining in a good shape so what i'm gonna do in that div put a class name i'm just gonna be make a flex item center and the gap going to be five and you see as that hidden flex so what i'm gonna do i'm gonna just Mm, cut that because i'm gonna wrap that entire things here so that would be immediately fine for the devices okay looks perfect so now we need to get that team toggle so how actually we can do it's better to make it separate from the header so in the top layer of the header i'm gonna just make a function which is going to be team toggle and that will be an arrow function i love to use that arrow function very much so we're gonna pass that one variable which is going to be a resolve team and from and also the set set team remember we actually did that one and we're gonna do it get it from that use team remember pre previously we used that and before going all other things what i want to do it i want to make it as use client because we're gonna use so many clients at library so it's gonna give us error so for those kind of requirement feel free to go to the next chess documentation and see where actually you're going to use the client and where actually you're going to use the server especially whenever you have the clickable event where you are using the third party library which actually not giving uh, the server side uh, services still then you need to use that client use client so to create that component as a client side and if you have that support the server side lots of uh, libraries already providing it like react icons and some other libraries they're providing already they're already providing that server side rendering so you can use directly without making the component as use client so now we're using that next themes which is and some other properties which actually not going to give us that so we're just going to use that and let's put also another variable which is going to be other theme and that other theme going to come directly from result theme remember that result theme if it's dark then it's going to be okay let's combine with that light and otherwise it's going to be dark okay so let's mount it and set mount it combine with that use instead okay see we are using the hook which actually not supporting in you cannot use the hooks in the server side so we need to make it as client side so now we will pass that as use effect 
and inside that use effect we're gonna run that simple and also need to pass the dependency here which is going to be an empty array no other dependencies will be available so we're gonna just make that set mounted by default it's going to be false the parameter going to be false okay so this is the functionality we have been provided now we need to return a value from that function so in return what actually we're gonna pass we're gonna pass a button remember the button which actually we're going to use that it will be the similar button you see that's the effect we want to show and that's where we are using the button so in the button we're going to use a two icons which are going to be io it will be uh sunny sunny outline and that icon is directly coming up from that react icons io5 you see so feel free to go to that library with that react icons then you can actually have a better look how actually that is working so now i'm going to put a class name here okay class name uh, I will just make a default variable of that height 6 and width of 6. You can also define with the text Excel. And the stroke is going to be till of 500. Not 50, 500. And then I'm going to make also, oops, it will be, mm, I think it will get the transition. Okay, because we are toggling it. And then whenever we're going to hover of the group, because we're going to make that button as the group. So whenever we're gonna hover on that group hover and we're gonna make that stroke as till of 700 okay and also in the dark that one is going to be hidden okay let's see uh, okay nothing happened yet because we didn't pass that value so what i actually want to do is that instead of just combining that we can pass that one so let's go to implement here it will be a team table okay save it here let's see if we can see something okay we cannot see yet anything because we need to make the button to move because in dark it will not be seen what actually not be seen remember it will be in the dark that one will be in the light so that's the one we created okay so by default in the dark it will not be seen but where it will be the button which actually going to be seen in the dark so that one it will be bs uh bs a moon i think stars fail yeah that's the one we are going to use so the similar class name okay class name first by default i want to make it hidden and whenever you're gonna make dark it will be you can make it flex or you can also make it as a blog and height i'm gonna put the default the one i put that uh sorry height and weight going to be 66 and fill going to be zinc of 500 okay zinc of 500 and stroke going to be zinc of 502 and again i'm gonna make that uh transition you know because it's going to give an effect on that so now you see there will be appearing something okay you see already appear so something is appearing but nothing is happening once i click that so also this not looks nice because this should be like that so let's go in the top layer of the button we're gonna make it to go like that so first you're gonna define a type which is going to be a button then let's put some class uh, also i'm gonna put some area level uh area level and in the area level uh, i'm instead of putting in the string i'm gonna go in a functional approach so if it's mounted uh okay if it's mounted then i'm gonna pass something if it's not then i'm gonna pass something so if it's mounted i put a back tick which is going to be a switch uh S -W -I -T -C -H, switch to and that going to be other theme so the theme we are going to be pass so theme and now if it's not mount to it's going to be toggle theme so that's the area level we are passing that okay so now let's put some class name on that so first of all we're gonna put it as group remember we are putting the hover on the group and of course rounded should be full and vj white of opacity of 90 
and padding x x is going to be three padding y should be two and a shadow should be lg the larger shadow and shadow going to be a zinc of 800 and on that opposite you're going to be a 50 and also i think the ring i'm gonna put one and then now it's time to give the ring a color which going to be ring going to be a zinc of 900 and it's going to be a 50 of opacity and now backdrop i'm gonna put a blur okay and again it's going to be transition on that because it's going to take the effect now i need to get the dark pg so whenever it's gonna be dark the background is going to be zinc of 800 and also the opacity going to be 90 and the dark the ring also going to be uh, white and opacity going to be 10 and the dark we're gonna give a hover effect so once we hover in the dark it's going to be ring white of the opacity going to be 20. now if we save that okay let's go back you see we're having a pretty much a very good scenario but still nothing is happening once we click on that so remember once we want to take an action something once you click on any of the button we need to like trigger the on click event so put a function have over here on click and we're gonna make that set theme as the other theme so it's gonna toggle through the theme so let's go let's click you see that's the light theme we have been created don't worry we're gonna fix that <laughs> i think i missed some of the class name so if see okay that's similar that's pretty much all we are created so also i think uh okay that can be a mismatch with the class name on that because you know the typing the class name can be a tedious work so i'll just combine with that the previous one so let's see okay uh okay good to go and i think the button one i think that's fine the problem with the button so in the button maybe i miss some of the class name okay let's go in the button so in the text we keep the tail mm, for the dark text did i keep anything i don't think so dark text let's keep some text for the dark okay dark text going to be till of 600 nothing uh, okay so what i'm gonna do is that okay text uh, till i give 50 should be 500 okay so my bad it's not a 50 it should be 500 for all of that okay that's it now we are having that so it's time to create that navigation of course i will keep that dark thing so now i want to create that navigation here so that's the place because there will be two navigation in the bottom layer after the toggle we're gonna make that one navigation which is going to be for the mobile navigation so it will be for that mobile navigation and here in that section we're gonna create that desktop uh, oops it will be navigation okay so first creating the desktop navigation and to create the desktop navigation is again very good practice to declare that functional things beforehand so again i can actually declare it here or the how the tailwind css is doing that very good approaches i'm going to follow that because we're going to creating the themes on their approach so it will be a const and it will be desktop mm, let's put that navigation okay and now we're gonna return something okay we're gonna return and in the return mm, okay let's just return that so in the return i'm gonna return a nav tag one in the nav i'm gonna put that ul and in the ul i'm gonna pass that nav item so what kind of nav item we are talking about because we're gonna wrap our nav icon because remember once we are hovering here there is effect going on so actually there will be five items so we can individually declare one item so i will just going to create a function const which going to be nav item and here 
I'm going to define that. So uh, first thing first, it's going to make a lit is active, which is going to be use path name from the next navigation. And that one is equal to be href. So whatever the href we are passing, it's going to be that same parameter on that. Okay, so now we need to define a two simple things. So one, it will be href, another, it will be, uh, I think, children. Okay, and that both things, again, I'm going to define that the href I'm going to be as a string, and again, the children I'm going to be react dot react not. So it depends on you, you can keep the typo here, or you can declare it in other parameter. So now simply what I'm going to return is that from that function, you know, I'm typing a lot. So I'm just going to return uh, something called, uh, okay, an li, which is going to be wrapped with the link. So once we click, it's going to generate the several pages as to go. And in the link, we're going to give the href, which is going to be follow the href. And here, we're going to just pass that children. So those the values is going to be taken. <coughs> okay. First thing first, let's get that href something. So put this class name. And of course, I'm going to wrap it with that. And then we're going to pass the CLSX. We're going to import that. It's going to combine with our if else condition. So first, I'm going to make it as relative then of course i'm going to make it as block px going to be three padding y going to be two and then i'm going to make also is as transition so that will be our first parameter and then if it's active is active then we're gonna define something like and if it's not active then we're gonna define something so what actually you're gonna define if it's active we're gonna make the text as still of 500 okay in the dark we're gonna make that text still of 400 so i think you are unsure actually what we are creating if we just go back here if we click and you see the text it just that's the effect and that's the bottom effect that two two things we are creating for the text and for the bottom in line okay so if it's in dark theme it will be 400 if it's the white team it will be 500 and if it's not active so what we're gonna make hover the text going to be till of 500 that's the one combination and then dark hover text till of 400 that's it now if we go through we'll see nothing of because we didn't create anything so now that's the children and now here for auto creating the designing parameter I'm gonna just make that one condition like is active and and oops it will be and 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 then we're gonna just pass a span tag I think self-closing span going to be better because we are now going to combine that bottom layer so for that things let's put some class name on that so it will be absolute of course and the inset x going to be one and also minus bottom going to be uh let's make that one pixel so i'll just make that as px one pixel so if you can hover through it and you can learn it's a you see, minus one pixel and also height going to be pixel you see if you hover through it's just one pixel and bj going to be gradient and to right and from uh from till 500 okay and from the 500 going to be with zero part zero opacity and via till 500 again uh not 50 going to be 500 then the 40 percent of the opacity to till 500 going to be a zero percent opacity and for the dark just it will be a from till uh, 400 with zero percent of opacity and then dark via it will be till 400 again 40 percent of opacity and the dark oops it will be dark to till 
400 again zero personal capacity so now just i want to give an advice on you are creating something uh, like uh, the theme you need to be very tedious on what actually you are exploring to create the theme you need to be a uh, very tedious on declaring all the class name like what's gonna be affected once it's in the dark and what would be affected once it light so the combination should be clear on your side otherwise you will mess it around and again get the color code what the color code you are going to use beforehand so now that's the themes we are that's the link actually so that's the cre we created for our nav item so now we're gonna pass that nav item here so what kind of nav item it will be available remember it's a ella it's, it's a list item so now we can get that nav item so now in the nav item first thing first we're gonna pass about and also we're gonna pass the href which going to be uh oops it will be about so that's our desktop navigation one is available let's just go back here and instead of that we're gonna pass that desktop navigation okay that's it you see we are having the about but not that portion don't worry we're gonna have the two so first thing first now i'm gonna just quickly wrap these things up i'm gonna just make that two three four five i think it will be our five yeah so then it's going to be or what i'm gonna do i'm gonna just pass that other four because it would be similar of it okay five so now we need to style that things up so here first thing first if we are passing any of the props like if we are passing the props from anywhere we can take that so also to get that one i'm gonna just define uh, oops it will not be there i'm gonna get, define the props as react dot uh component component props with ref and that ref going to be from nav okay that's the classification if you're passing the props but right now we're gonna define the other things so let's put some class name i'm gonna make flex and round it going to be md video wide of 90 percent opacity padding x the horizontal will be three and text going to be sm uh the font going to be a medium text zinc of 800 and shadow will be lg okay and then shadow will be zinc of 800 with a with five opacity like uh yeah i think a ring will be one okay and the ring going to be zinc of 900 and again five opacity backdrop it will be a blur uh, okay just put it a blur and the dark bg going to be a zinc of 800 with 90 percent opacity and the dark uh the text going to be zinc okay uh i think what can be better to give a text in a zinc of okay for me i will keep it as i think the 200 it will be good approach so to zero okay now also dark the ring it will be white and it will be go through with a 10 percent of opacity okay okay now see okay if we go back here of course we don't have any pages it will give us an error and other things but see we're getting a 404 page but you see the effect is actually working so we are pretty much on our good way to go okay so i think that uh that's pretty much in a good deal here so if we just uh, shrink it through as you see so that's the thing highlighting thing we're gonna create right now okay so that's the text of navigation and here in that deep we're gonna make things in a right mode so what i'm gonna do is that um, to make that class name and it will be a flex md going to be a flex one in the medium screen and justify going to be end and md justify center oops not it will be okay md okay now if i just shrink it through it should be disappear you see okay it's not yet disappear why uh am i okay we i better pass it here also you can pass there but it's, it's okay uh so it will be pointer events 
auto okay so no event if any of the events is actually triggering from the pointer it will be auto so by default it's gonna be hidden md it's gonna be block okay so medium is still it gonna see see now it's now not available if we shrink back here okay that's cool that's cool but did we hide the login button okay yeah it should be hidden also because once you click in the menu that should appear so now we created the desktop navigation so it's time to create our mobile navigation so let's go so how actually the mobile navigation will work so first go to the top layer we gonna after that navigation desktop we're gonna create that mobile navigation so it will be const and again it will be mobile navigation okay now in the mobile navigation we again going to define that props so the props going to be react dot uh, component i think the component props with uh, without ref there i think i think you need to use it without ref just see that and the type of it will be uh pop over okay and which we are going to use from headless ui so we are going to use the popover to create our designing parameter okay so now we are going to uh create all of the things to make it right so it will be return Oops, it will be return and here we're going to return that uh popover and how the popover things actually work feel free to read their documentation there and by default if we are passing anything on the props it gonna take that as the props so first thing first let's just define it here the mobile navigation and how actually we want to see so here let's put that mobile navigation okay and here it also going to be class name we're gonna put that pointer even view okay uh pointer events going to be auto and md it going to be hidden okay so let's uh, shrink it down here so we're supposed to see something here which is going to be available like these two things the theme changer is going to be available all the time but i don't know why actually it's just disappear uh it's because we are making those things here see so again i'm gonna cut it here i'm gonna just make this here and i'm gonna make it as flex because i don't want to hide the theme changer so the theme changer is available now here the menu the mobile navigation should be appearing so in the mobile navigation you see uh, in the top layer we are passing that pop over here so here we need to pass that one more things which is going to be pop over dot is button so in the button we're gonna pass that one text which is going to be the menu so you see the menu is available and that menu should be uh before that theme toggle so i'll put the toggle is down okay so that's the menu from there we need to make it there and then create those things okay you need to be a very tedious once you are doing those kind of things because it's almost all the things in the designing parameter so uh let's put some class name in the popover okay what i will do i'll make it group i'll make it flex and item center rounded full uh, oops not it will be rounded full rounded okay vg white uh white of 90 percent opacity and px going to be four and py going to be two and the text going to be small and font going to be medium and text zinc of 800 okay and then shadow going to be lg and shadow will be zinc uh, i think okay it will be shadow zinc of 200 i think yeah 800 and we're gonna give a five opacity ring of one and then ring uh, it will be zinc of 900 with a five percent opacity backdrop again the blur i just keep it a blur not the zero percent and the dark going to be oops not 
dark BJ going to be zinc of 800 and with the 90% of opacity and dark text going to be zinc of 200 okay and the dark again the ring will be mm, I think I'll give it white but with the 10% of opacity and the dark whenever uh oops it will be smaller case dark whenever we hover in the dark the ring going to be white but with 20% of opacity okay if we save that see what we got okay that's cool we are almost there so after the menu remember we're gonna have a fa which is going to be a chevron down icon okay i'm just getting auto import so don't uh, don't think that we don't need to import that if it's not getting auto imported you need to manually import that remember that otherwise it will just give you a bunch of error which actually <laughs> going to be uh, going to make you crazy so just to be your references okay put a class name margin left going to be three and height going to be auto oops it will be auto and width going to be two stroke going to be zinc of 500 and whenever we are in the group we hover stroke going to be zinc of 700 and whenever we're gonna in the dark mode group hover stroke going to be zinc of 400 mm, okay you see that things is right here so instead of hide weight you know i told you you can use that text parameter of that text you can make it as excel okay that's fine also it work so instead of excel uh, i think i will make a little bit smaller okay now you can see side by side okay instead of axel i'm gonna just put it at lg or i can make it md you just do it as much as preferable for you okay i think better to standard way should be text base okay looks or has them it's giving just making things crazy okay now it looks good <laughs> okay so i think that's pretty much similar okay i think uh, i'll just go with the previous one because smallest looks good so it's just to show you that you can use more things so now once you click the menu should be appearing you see this menu from the pop over should be appearing so after the button i'm gonna create that menu so now here i'm gonna make it a transition you know and also i need to import that from headless ui and that transition is going to be a root okay in the root i'm gonna make that a tree parameter should be a transition dot child so in the child i'm gonna make that pop over so it will be the first pop over parameter and we're gonna pass that overlay here and that overlay putting some class name oops it will be class name okay and that parameter going to be uh, fixed what actually we're going to do is to create the overlay then we're going to create that entire things so that will be the overlay here so it will be fixed and inset going to be zero z going to be a 50 and then vz jing going to be 800 with 40 percent of opacity of oh, not the 10 40 and also backdoor blur of sm and dark dark oops dark it will be a video of um, black and with 80 percent of the opacity so now that children we need to pass in a way which actually can be recognizable so i will use as a fragment uh, fragment and don't forget to import the fragment from react and now enter i want to show what kind of things going to be it will be the duration going to be 150 and it will be easy out okay and enter from we need to pass opacity of zero so it will come from the zero percent opacity so what i'm gonna do just get the value here and then i will pop it up so whenever it's entering it's going to be easy out 
and enter from the opposite is 0 to 100 uh, 0 to 100 so whenever it's entering remember entering is 0 to 500 you see it's just going like that so let's go back here if we click you see it's already there it's already there it's the same thing we created the background the hologram now we need to create that okay let's go back here we're gonna create the other things so now we're gonna after that transition one child we're gonna create another child so it will be a uh, transition and in the transition we're gonna declare another child and here we're gonna make that panel so it will be popover dot panel so in the panel we're gonna create all other things but remember all the fragment issue and fragment things going to be also passed to that parameter so the similar things we are just giving that duration and live from left to it just live from where it's gonna live and from how it's gonna live to so this is the simple navigation parameter we are creating so now in the pop over panel i'm gonna pass one uh i'm gonna pass one entire div here so in the div i'm gonna make a pop over button so it will be pop over dot button and inside that button i'm gonna put that io close circle outline i think yeah that will be the closing icon for that and put some i think uh, i'm gonna pass the area level and that area label going to say us it will be for that close menu did it import it i don't think so let's import iso close circle outline Mm, I don't know what's actually giving us wrong. Okay, area level should be string. Uh, is is a string? Uh, any anything should be appearing here. Okay. Uh, okay, it's actually a string. Okay. Anyway, uh, just uh, put some class name. We're gonna see that actually why is not uh, okay because we put it in the wrong side. The area level should be on that pop over button, not there. Okay, it's my bad. And the class name for that pop over button uh, the class name is going to be minus m uh, okay minus m going to be one so margin going to be one and um, padding should be one okay what's actually wrong with that element area level is a string what if we don't want to give that um, okay uh, okay it's yeah i just put that naming mistake okay so now for uh, the closing button so i'm gonna put a class name and again height six which going to be six and the text going to be zinc of 500 okay and the dark text going to be zinc of 400 okay so now it's there but you cannot see so what i'm gonna do in the div or actually in the pop over panel i'm gonna put some class them here so first of all i'm gonna make it as focus so it will always be on focus and put some class name and it's going to be fixed and inset x going to be four okay and then top going to be eight and also the z index going to be 50 the top layer z index and origin going to be from the top and rounded three axle okay around the three axle bg going to be uh not inherent but the white and padding going to be eight ring going to be one okay let's save it you see the things is almost there is appearing so let's just make some more colorful here and now for the ring it's going to be zinc 900 and also the five percent of upper city and the dark bg going to be zinc of 900 and dark zinc of 800 mm, not the, the the bj it's going to be ring of 800 okay now you see that looks similar of it so we have a pop over button so now after that circle here we're gonna take an h2 tag which going to be take us as h okay h2 tag 
uh, okay it should be say as as uh, i think that h2 take going to be down of the popover which going to make us as navigation okay and to amplify that one put some class name and that one going to be text going to be sm font going to be uh medium and the text going to be zinc of 500 mm, zinc of 500 and also mm, the dark text going to be zinc of 400 okay so now because we will just make some effect put some class name we're gonna make it a flex and you know the navigation you want to keep it up so we're gonna make the flex row reverse you see it's gonna exchange oh, very nice and item center justify between so we are having our navigation so after that navigation we're gonna have a nav bar so that's the part two so now we're gonna create the nav bar here i think it will be better to create after the deep so again we're gonna pass that nav parameter the ul parameter and then you know the mobile navigation item remember we have two item one is for the navigation like like a desk, desktop navigation and we use that nav item and now what actually we're gonna create we're gonna create another item which actually define us here for the mobile navigation item so it will be a const and there it will be mobile mm, mobile i think nav item okay so in the mobile nav item remember we're gonna pass that props so it's going to be props if we are passing any of the props should be react from component props uh with uh, i think again that one also will be without ref and then it's gonna take us nav okay that's cool okay now here we're gonna return something and as we have been did that earlier so what actually we're gonna pass it uh okay uh, what actually we're gonna pass is that mm, no no that, i think i have been made a mistake here because that should not be that so here i'm gonna just simply return uh what actually gonna return put an li so the list item and then we're gonna make that uh pop over dot button and here in the our button i'm gonna pass that children uh children so also i need to pass that parameter which is going to be href and also going to be children and then defining the type for that href again going to be string and then children going to be react dot react not okay so now okay did i made any mistake to defining the children okay i think we're good okay so now uh, i will just simply pass that li tag okay so it's just coming with the simple class name with that so that's the pop -up button for the mobile nav item so now here in the particular nav i need to define that uh button here so in that url so i will just put that mobile nav item and here i'm again going to pass that one about and put an href which is going to be for slash about it will be for slash about so as we are going to have some more items so i will just go and get all the items here okay so now as you see our items is ready but we need to make it looks more better put some class name and oops not the class it will be class name I'm going to be margin top of six okay looks cool and in the ul put some class name okay and it will be minus margin horizon uh, margin vertical should be two and text going to be uh base and also the text going to be zinc of 800 then the dark i want to make it divide 
which is going to be zinc of 100 and also i'm gonna give you five percent of opacity so in the dark uh okay i think uh yeah the text is going to be zinc of 300 okay now it looks cool so if we go for our you see that looks pretty much simple and better so if we just toggle through and we go through it you see that's the similar things happening so one more thing should be coming here that is the button so i will just combining the previous button here i will just dump it here it's almost the similar things all this class them should be much more similar like beforehand so that's the way we have been done with our uh, navigation bar here so now we can actually create this part with that so to implement that one what actually we're gonna create is that first let's create one more thing is that 404 page so like if we just go in the about see we don't have any page so it's giving us a 404 error so that error we're gonna get a lot of times so it's actually not good to go to find in that way so what actually we're gonna do we're gonna create a file called not found page so let's go back here and i'm gonna remove uh, okay keep that text we're gonna work with the later on so we'll make a a file which will be not found.tsx okay refce and i'll rename it as not found so that's the page we're gonna make that and you see it's gonna appear here so first thing first we're gonna create the container here to make it work okay uh what's the wrong is happening uh the default export not found is not in react component why so okay that should not appear mm. it's just reload that i think yeah you see the not found page is available so here instead of deriving anything for first thing first let's just give a p tag which is going to be give us a 404 flag so put a class name and the text going to be base font going to be a uh, semi bold and the text going to be zinc of 400 okay now let's see okay that uh looks much more better because once you change anything it's gonna reload because it's just a not found page is taking in directly everything from the uh, server so what i'm gonna do i'm gonna create a container to make uh things in a better way so it's gonna take everything in the middle and it's gonna looks perfect on that so in the container what actually we're gonna do uh we're gonna take everything as a children okay oops it will be not the react children children and here we're gonna pass that children parameter so it's going to be children and also i'm gonna pass the class name so in that typo the children going to be react dot react node and also the class name uh, if the class name is available okay then it would be a string that's it okay so now what actually we need to pass is that okay that's the class name i think okay the class name so now here in the div we're gonna pass that class name with the clsx clsx okay now we're gonna define with that which going to be a backtick okay first parameter going to be max width of seven axle okay and then mx auto okay and then padding xx is going to be 10 and padding y going to be 20 and after that first parameter if we're giving any of the class name it also going to take the class name so now let's go in the component here not in the component but the not found pages here so what actually i'm gonna pass i'm gonna pass some simple designing parameter here which actually going to become from that so just import the component here okay so what actually i did is that i just create a simple parameter of the function which coming with the 404 and then coming of the h1 tag now we need to get the button parameter so now this button we're gonna create in a separate way but i just want to comment out the button right now because 
that could be a little bit tricky work because we're gonna generate that button in pretty much all over the places so this will be there and uh first one more thing is that we also uh, need to create the footer so it will look perfect so that's going to be our footer.tsx rafce so in the footer also pretty much similar i'm not going to just go with that pretty much all the way turn it down upside so what i'm going to define is that that here instead of deep i'm going to just make that a simple footer of footer tag and this will be my footer so in the footer i'm going to pass a deep and inside the deep actually uh, i need to combine a two more deep here so let's just see our previous footer how actually we did that if we come back here and you see the simple one deep and two deep that's it nothing more than that so that will be uh, so in, inside the footer so i'm gonna pass a link parameter so it will be the link and let's just get from uh, that next link so first thing first it will be our about and the href it going to be about okay so there will be a four uh, uh, three other more so i'll just pass that exception and that footer also we're gonna inject pretty much after um i think where's the our layout here pretty much after the children so it will be footer okay let's import also so that's the footer let's go back here and you're gonna find it you see that's the footer we have been created so not best bound is okay so let's go back there so in our home page we're gonna create that footer in instances so let's go back to our footer and i'm gonna close others now in the footer uh, in the top layer put a class name the padding x is going to be 10 okay so now here what i'm going to do gonna pass another p tag which actually giving us uh giving us that uh component here so um, what i will pass that we just need to pass that one that add two 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 zero two four then the result text so i'm gonna make that and copy so to give the copyright tag and then i'm gonna pass the date parameter so it will be new date and inside the date i'll just get full year and that's the full year we will get and then john doe all price reserves okay pretty much fine so now we are having two texts available here so in the class name we're actually gonna put the text going to be sm a small text the text going to be zinc of 400 okay and the dark zinc of uh and dark text zinc of 400 i think dark is 400 and normally it's going to be 500 so that's the text okay now this parameter i'm gonna take with another div inside another div okay div okay looks good so in this layer what i'm gonna do class name flex i'm gonna make it a flex wrap and also justify center and gap in x axis going to be six and also gap in y going to be one and here text going to be small text font medium and text going to be zinc of 800 and once we are in the dark text going to be zinc of 200 okay we are good that looks perfect so now in that layer um, also i'm gonna make it a class name which is going to be uh, actually um, i think we are good to go so this is one layer and instead of putting that here what we can do is that instead of dividing those parameters what actually we have been done yeah we created that border here so what i'm gonna do is that mm, make a border in the top and border it will be zinc 100 
okay and uh padding y going to be 10. let's see okay that looks cool it's actually working and whenever you're gonna in dark the border zinc of 700 with 40 opacity okay so now if we take that um, i think uh normally it's going to be 100 is not good is if we will be five okay that looks good okay so now it looks better so now what actually we need to do we need to wrap these two parameters together so we're gonna make it a flex item center justify uh not normal it will be between okay looks perfect so now we have been doing a pretty much good progress on that so first thing first we are going to articulate something in a better shape we're going to create the hero section now to combine those parameters here so it will be our hero section so let's go back here and in the component layer we're going to put a name which is going to be hero dot dot tsx rfce so this hero section we are going to import here in our page remember this is our first uh, first page where we are taking getting the text so it will be hero so we're gonna import that one so now we can see a hero text here okay so now it's time to combine and make it work okay so in the pages um, i think in the main pages i will not create any class theme right now so it will be in that layer only because remember we're going to wrap that hero with the container so in that way we can actually modify that so if i put that container and also need to rename this part you see some of this style is actually getting by default so now here we're gonna put a div and inside that div i'm gonna put an h1 tag where actually i'm gonna write that software engineer and react react developer and also and quick learner you can put whatever the text you want to prefer so also i'm going to put a class name which is going to be empty of nine just get a little bit of from the top class name max width of two axel okay do not go bound on that so put a class name and here in the class name i need to make it much more bigger to highlight that one so the text going to be totally four axel and the font going to be bold and tracking going to be tight not the tighter but the tight text a zinc of 800 and also sm small devices text will be five axel okay text will be five axel and the dark text zinc of 100 let's see okay looks cool i think the similar yeah that's similar now i'm gonna take another p tag and inside the p tag i'm just gonna put some lorem text with the name so i'll just get the text that's it so that's the text i'm gonna impiling here so let's go and give a class name so margin top going to be six and the text going to be base and the text going to be zinc of 600 and dark text going to be zinc of 400 that's it so now that looks pretty much better so it's time to create that uh image section here so to combine that image here we're gonna create another folder uh, not the folder but the file which going to be take as photos.tsx rfce in the photos and then i'm gonna get that photos here okay photos now if we roll back here you see the photos component should appear right now here so let's go back to our photos here so now in the photos we need to import the photos you see in my uh, folder here images you see there's a several photos i think five photos here which actually we're going to render so let's go back the photos i'm gonna import that photos so it will be import and image one and it will be from 
at tell we at uh, images and then image one so in that way i will also buff that other four images okay so now i have four images now in the four images what actually i'm gonna make uh i'm gonna make a combination of rotation remember there is a rotation going on that's the rotation i'm gonna create as beforehand so let our uh, rotation rotations and that will be the area of rotations so now here i'm gonna just make some zigzag rotation which are going to be combined with a two minus two two minus two 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 minus two so that's the thing so now in the deep where actually i'm going to get one more deep and inside the deep i'm gonna take that parameter and i'm gonna create an uh like area of images where i'm gonna take that first image i'm gonna take that uh second image i'm gonna take that uh third image and fourth image and image number five okay so now i have five image i'm gonna just map through it and after mapping i'm gonna take that uh, as image and also i'm gonna make that image index to get the index from the year and now i'm gonna return directly from here what i'm gonna return i'm gonna return a div and inside that div i'm gonna return our image so it will be image from next image and here in the image i'm gonna just keep that source which going to be mm, image the source actually we are providing and also i'm gonna pass an alt tag which going to be uh i'm gonna just simply pass the image and also i'm gonna put some class name which is going to be uh absolute absolute and also inset going to be not the indent it will be inset inset going to be zero and then uh one more thing going to be a rollback is that height going to be full width going to be full and object should be uh oops it will be object should be cover so that's the image should be coming here so now we are not seeing any image because remember we're giving width full and height full but we need to and i think yeah it's appearing but it's getting the full width and height so let's go in the top layer put some class name margin y should be 16 and sm empty of 20 okay fine then let's go in that deep okay minus my going to be a 4 and it will be flex justify center gap should be 5 and padding y should be 4 and small the gap should be 8 okay you see it's taking all the parameters so from this we need to turn it into this okay also i need to define the sizes here so the sizes and the sizes i will pass some of the default parameter so it will be mean width uh mean width it will be 640 pixel okay and also 18 ram and then 11 ram okay now you're gonna see something uh, is it appearing yeah it's just okay it's still not it's still taking the full width and height so how actually i gonna do that remember that deep so that's the deep i'm gonna pass a key parameter so the key should be image dot source so that's the parameter i'm gonna not the item should be item or yeah image dot source okay now here put some class name i'm gonna make it as relative okay so after putting that relative i also need to combine that one so i will make that aspect ratio so aspect ratio should not be auto it should be 9 by 10 okay the manual parameter so still we are not seeing the image so because it's just we are giving that aspect ratio uh, i think yeah i give it right and then i'm going to give a width of 44 because otherwise it cannot capture the width parameter actually how much it's going to be taken 
and then uh, I'm gonna make it flex none and also overflow should be hidden and rounded should be axle and VJ going to be zinc of 100 okay and let's just go back here and SM with going to be 72 uh, okay I think it's not working in that way SM with going to be 72 and SM rounded going to be 2 axle okay and dark BJ going to be zinc of 800 you see and now seeing the photo now we need to create the rotation here <coughs> so now to implement the rotation here remember we use directly we're injecting directly here but instead of injecting directly we can just cut that because we will not inject the class name directly here we'll use the clsx to get our com combination here to make that things right so it will be clsx now in the clsx first parameter we're gonna pass that so that's the default parameter we are giving so now after that we will create the rotation so put a comma here so i will make that rotations and in the rotations i will make that image index remember and i will just put some of the marking here which going to make that percentage of rotation so rotations dot length so with the length of flyover it's gonna just rotate my image so that's it but the problem is once we are loading you see that just seeing empty which actually is not looking good so to avoid that we're gonna create a suspense which will be give us that to load something there so to create the suspense which i'm gonna do in the top layer i'm gonna take another function which will be const and i'm gonna make that at load image so in the load image i'm gonna declare my function so this load image going to be an async function so it will be async and then because we need to create that one with a loop through to passing some of the time so parameter is gonna take that image a source and that image source going to be a string of course so the string would be there uh, or without a string i'm gonna just keep it as any any source can be providable so const i will make that random and in the random i will just make that mat.floor to putting that a timing positioning with that so it will be mat.random and in the random parameter i will just go with that five um, five okay five five and into 100 so it will give a very decent time so it will await for the new and it will wait for the new promise so new promise and then with that promise it will just go with that resolve and that resolve uh oops i need to define the type also just any uh, return any so now here it's gonna be set timeout and that's it the timeout it's gonna depend on the resolve and the random okay so now i will return something what actually i'm going to return is that remember we created that image thing here so i'm just gonna cut that i'm gonna return it here and instead of image i'm gonna put that image source and instead of the alt tag i'm gonna just put that is coming from that load image so the width and height is gonna be similar of the previous one now I need to use the suspense to make that things work so how the suspense work feel free to go to the playlist you're gonna find a one or two video which actually where I describe how the suspense things work properly so now it will use the suspense and don't forget to import it from the react and here I'm gonna pass that load image okay load image and that image in the image source it's gonna take that image source i think src uh did we take no not that not the image source we're gonna pass it as image remember we're taking that as image so now everything is good to go but now in the suspense 
uh, which actually we need to pass a fallback function where actually we can define what actually we want to see but right now uh, I don't want to see much more things I will just create a div okay I'll just create a div with a p-tag which actually giving us me loading but trust me you can do a lot of things without that also so class name I will give the full height full width and full height and bj going to be block of block by 80 percent of opacity flex item center justify center okay right and for the p tag class name and the text going to be two axel and font going to be a medium text going to be white okay and tracking going to be wider and mm, animate pulse okay now if we reload you see that's loading going on so it's just giving an instance it's not like it's loading something you see just giving a loading parameter so that's basically everything with that part one because we're gonna combine that later on because if you are having idea how actually we're gonna do that so later on which actually gonna up next is coming with that parameter with that mdx and other things trust me it's very simple to do that we have been dealing pretty much the hard work right now and i don't want to put everything in one video it will give you a headache that you cannot finish it at all and it maybe you're gonna lose the project so if you are just going to elaborate the article project how it gonna be work and gonna be rendered better go with that slowly slowly so with that we are using that one and you see it's fully responsive with that and if you just go back here you can just toggle through it so it depends on you how you want to know that how you want to learn it but in our next build we're gonna go with that to fixing all the parameter of the articles and projects and all those pages and of course i want you to get the uh get the full compact uh parameter of uh whatever we have been made so what actually i'm gonna go i'm gonna push that code in my github repo so you'll be able to fetch that also so i'm gonna make that git uh, what i'm gonna make is that i'm gonna create a branch so it will be git branch and then i'm gonna create a branch name is that first mm, i'm gonna make a meaningful name actually where you can switch so it will be uh the part one okay so now if i put that git branch branch you see two branches there so i'm gonna make that git checkout of part one okay so now switch to part one i'm gonna just add all and then i'm gonna make commit which going to be um, committed from part one okay and now i'm gonna git push origin and that will be part one okay so now i will push that code in the repo so first of all of course you will not get that in the repo which is available here because if i just refresh it it will not combine here if you just switch the branch you see the part one you'll be available to see the part one but of course i will not actually gonna pull that because first thing for us you're gonna start with the main branch so that your all the things going to be available and append with uh, the normal way what i want you to do is that create the best things you can and of course you if you want to share your code with me just create a branch and then pull it of course i'm gonna just uh, create the branch and pull that uh, push that one i'm gonna pull it from here and i'm gonna also focus what you made if your design is getting more better than me then of course i'm gonna appreciate that don't worry about that so i wish you to do whatever we build till now to finish that okay so maybe in our tomorrow we're gonna create that our articles and other parameter we're gonna go one by one slow but we're gonna create it everything from the beginning and we're gonna create it in a very good impact on a way okay so i think it will help you to find a better job to learn something more in future and of course 
we will see you in the next video